unfortunately over the years you know why you're here so let's get started with the first one so the studio version of Comfortably Numb, the one and only that we all love, was mixed a little different than the rest of the Vol album. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they mixed it, but it sounds very different than Hey You or uh, In The Flesh. Some say there is a flanger in the mix, but that's not true. It's just rotating speaker. And so his signal chain goes as uh, a Ram's Head 1973, Digital Delay, MXR Digital Delay, Watch My Delay video, and a rotating speaker, his Yamaha. And of course, I don't want to get into details like cables and, I mean, parallel mixing and split signal and everything. I'm just giving you what you need to know, and we're gonna get that, of course. Get the tone, I mean. And this is how his guitar sounded without the mix. So let's try to get that with a few pedals of our own. Please remember, most of the sound clips that I'm gonna give you is recorded on a 1 watt amp. What David Gilmour used is several hundred watt amps with huge volume and of course studio trickery and all. What I'm gonna give you is a practical guide that you can apply at your home. Tone. I love that tone. Actually, with EMGs, it's a little darker than it should be, but I love my EMGs with the SPC control mid boost. And if you follow the same signal chain that I'm gonna give you right now, you're probably gonna get pretty close. I've used a RAM set just like in the original. I use a delay, a digital delay, and I don't have a rotating cabinet, but who has, I mean. I've used Boss RT20 for my rotating tone. Please let me know what you think. I think that was pretty good. 1980, the wall live. Now on the second leg of the tour, he switched to his chorus instead of flanger. It's worth to mention that. But we're gonna get the flanger tone. That is actually the whole live tone, at least in my ear. Why did I just put that on me? Signal chase here. So signal chain goes as a big muff, a flanger, a delay, and he split the signal into a rotating cabinet and his high watts. And it sounds like this without the mix. Let's try to get that with a few pedals of our own. Okay, different kind of flanger, but Pretty close tone, I think. And again, this is just a guideline. This is not spot on. You will never get the spot on tones. And I don't mean in bedroom, ever. And I've used a ram set. I didn't use a compressor. I've used a ram set, a flanger, a leg lady, a delay, and a Boss RT20. 1984, his solo album. After the sad breakup with Roger Waters, I think he wanted to change his sound quite a bit. And he did, of course. He's using different kind of guitars. He left out his iconic black strat. He left out his big muff. He used a Boss HM2. And it's 80s. He really got into chorus tones. But, but, there's a but here. I think he used Boss CS3 instead of CS2 because the chorus sounds a little watery in my ears. And I think in a footage, I think I saw at least a CA3, not CA2. So to sum up, his signal chain goes as a compression, which I'm not sure, but you can go with or without compression. A big muff, a boss CS3, and delay. And it sounds like this. I don't know a boss HM2, <laughs> and I think I should get one because on the turning away on Delicate Sound of Thunder was played with an HM2. I can't get that sound with a big muff. I mean, I can't, I just... I've come across uh, a very different comfortably numb tone, a very different guitar that Gilmore used uh, while I was preparing for this video. It's a guest appearance on 1986, I think. So he really changed this gear here. I like, didn't include it in my notes. But the guitar he used has humbucker, and I'm not 
100% sure, but I think he had his Boss SD1 Super Overdrive. Yeah, you didn't hear me wrong. It's a Tube Screamer type pedal. He had a Boss SD1 on his pedal was around 1985, and you don't get that stratty big muff tone with the humbucker, with the big muff. So, I'm 95% sure, but I think you use the Boss SD1 here and a compressor at the start of the chain and I think he switched to CE2 again so signal chain again is a humbucker pickup a compressor a Boss SD1 Boss CS2 he switched back to 2 here and a delay and it sounds like this Nineteen eighty-eight, delicate sound of thunder. Now everyone seems to love this tone, and his signal chain is a compressor, a big muff, ram's head, a delay, and a CA two. Delay is before because he split his signal between Mesa Boogie and High Watts. Again, I'm not gonna get into that much detail about that. And it sounds like this. Let's try to get that with a few pedals of our own. I always struggle to get Delicate Sound of Thunder tone, but we'll see. a ram set big muff, a chorus, not after the delay, but before the delay, and a delay. Again, this is just a guideline. I don't think this is a spot on tone because I mess up boogie amp and everything. I always struggle with this tone actually. 1989, Venice. It's actually the same as Delicate Sound of Thunder. His signal chain goes as a compressor, a big muff, delay, and a chorus, and it sounds like this. Nineteen ninety, Nebworth, Knebworth, Nebworth is the same as Venice. Actually, a compressor, a big muff, a delay, and a chorus, and it goes like this. Nineteen ninety four, Pulse. I don't like the comfortably numb tone here actually because comfortably numb, it's a little smooth. Comfortably numb tend to be a little harsh on the studio, you remember? But the tone is great for sorrow on the turning around. I mean, the, the whole tour is perfect. And signal chain goes as. I'm gonna give you two uh, signal chains here actually. One is a compressor, P2, Pete Cornish P2, Boss CS2, into his MXR, 2290 delay, as he split the signal into two. And he has six high watts. You didn't hear me wrong. 600 watt amps. Signal is split in two. One goes into the high watt. The other one goes to the rotating speaker. The Opalas, actually. That's, but it's almost the same as the other ones. And and on the waving part, he uses another delay and another chorus. So it's worth to mention that this is the first signal chain he used on the tour. But the alternative version that he used a compressor, Boss CS2, a tube driver. Clean boost, a Sotec big muff into chorus and into delay and into rotary split signal and everything. I think the second signal chain is a little closer, but it's worth to mention both. I'll leave it up to you. And it sounds like this. Okay, now let's try to get those tones with a couple of pedals of all. There's a compressor, a big muff, green Russian. It's the same as so take big muff. And EQ after the big muff into a chorus into a delay and into a Boss RT20. I didn't use clean tube driver here because I don't need to. I don't think you needed to, but 
course, depends on your taste. I don't even think you need compressor for that tone, but in a bedroom setup, I like to use it. 2002, his acoustic concert, David Gilmour in concert. I think this is David Gilmour's I'm warming up the stage again kind of tour. Actually not tour, it's just a couple of shows, I think. His signal chain is a Gretsch, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, but Gretsch, neck pickup, a compressor, a tube driver, and a delay. And it sounds like this. to get that tone with a few pedals of our own. It's worth to mention that this is a single coil pickup. Uh, even though it's active, it's just single coil with Alnico's. Just watch my EMG. We got four more to go and the first one starts with 2005 Live 8. G2 era. G2 is smoother and darker tone. G2 is actually somewhere between a big muff and a tube driver. And when you combine those together, I mean a tube driver after the big muff, you get a little close sound, but nothing sounds like G2, at least what I've tried. So his signal chain goes as his iconic black strat again. A compressor, Demeter compilator in this case, G2 and a delay. I'm not sure he used tube driver after G2, but I don't think so, it sounds like uh, G2 alone, and it sounds like this. to get that with a few pedals of our own. I don't own a G2, I wish I do. I mean, believe me, I love that pedal. I'm gonna use a distortion instead of that, a Proco Red. That was close, but not quite, because, like I said, G2 is pretty unique. Rat doesn't replace that, in my opinion. So I'm gonna say I'm not that close, but, like I said, this is just a guideline. Three more to go! And first one starts with 2006, Gdansk Tones. My favorite tones by far, if you don't include 1977 harsh tones, of course. But comfortably, I'm here sounds a little muddy, a little too dark for my taste. Like I said, I'm used to the studio version tone. And his signal chain is a Pete Cornish P1, which is a little modded ram set into a clean tube driver, clean boost tube driver, and into delay into 400 watt high watts. <laughs> Try to get that with a couple of pedals of water. into Charlie Brown V4, into delay, and into my 1 watt linear. Two more to go, and this is actually on the same tour as Gdansk, on Royal Albert Hall. Royal Albert Hall. Royal Albert Hall. It's actually the same signal chain, but this, remember that night concert is a little brighter than Gdansk version. And not just for Comfortably Numb, for all of the songs. I think he just switched a few knobs. Finally, we got to our last one, it's 2016, Pompeii, one of the best tones actually for this comfortably numb tone, it's so sharp and bright and bitey, raise those 1600s. His signal chain is quite simple, a Ramset Big Muff, no compressor here, 
no compressor, his electric mistress, flanger, into a delay, and it sounds like this. You heard that tone? Yowza! Now let's try to get that with a couple of pedals of our mentioned that this is an active pickup like I said I think I've got them pretty close I've used a ram set a flanger a leg lady and a delay into my one watt amp but still with a vintage style single cone it's gonna sound a lot better it just so happens that I love these so here it is folks let's talk below like I've said several hundred watt amps on each tour or studio record I mean comparing that with a one watt amp this is just no-brainer but like I said this is just a guideline for you for all the signal chains you ever need and of course if you're looking for detailed tone guides about the covers I do which are rare like in any tongue pulse bootlegs live shows and all you should head over to my patreon account there are exceptional tabs that I personally make backing tracks that I personally extract you don't want to miss that and until next time see you guys later